questions and answers uh, from the nominee uh, from Edo State Prince Clement Ikanade Agba, who has left uh, the Red Chambers. And we'll be looking forward to the next nominee, who is the former Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, also, one of the screening sessions that Nigerians have been looking forward to, uh, Mr. Geoffrey Jidofo Kusike Onyama. Uh, he's Nigeria's Minister for Foreign Affairs. He was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, in November of 2015 uh, by President Mamadou Buhari. And uh, a bit about his educational qualification, he has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Columbia University in New York. And that was in 1977. And a Bachelor of Arts degree in Law from St. John's College in Cambridge. A Master's of Law from the London School of Economics and Political Science in 1982. Also a Master of Arts in Law from St. John's College, Cambridge in 1984. Admitted as a Barrister of Law of the Supreme Court in Nigeria in 1983. And called to the English Bar of the Gray's Inn in 1981. Started his research, uh, his career rather, as research officer in the Nigerian Law Reform Commission in Lagos between 1983 and 1984. And of course, uh, has been Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs. No word on if that's the same portfolio he's going to be holding in this cabinet. Uh, but we will be looking forward to the questions he will be asked and the answers he will give. So much colleagues. The, the nominee from Inugu the immediate past Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Geoffrey Onyema is on the podium. Honorable Minister, on behalf of my colleagues, you are welcome to the Senate Chamber. And for the purpose of the screening, we have copies of your CV, and you can go through those things in the CV that you feel we must take note of because of their significance for this exercise. And should we have omitted any, anything that you think is important, you can talk to that. And the Senate is prepared to receive your address. You can address the Senate. Your Excellency, the distinguished Senate President, Senator Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan. Your Excellency, distinguished Deputy Senate President, Senator Ovier Omoagege. Distinguished uh, principal officers of the Senate, distinguished senators, permit me, uh, Senate President, to acknowledge and, uh, and thank the senators from my state, Enugu State, namely Senator Ike Ekweremadu, Senator Chimaroke Nnaman, and Senator Chuka Utazi as well as uh, all the other distinguished uh, senators here present and uh, a number of you a number of you I, I, I know personally so thank you all very much indeed for, for being here it's a, a great honor for me um, Mr. President to appear here uh, before this august uh, body uh, for this uh, uh, screening exercise. Your Excellency, I would start, if you permit, by extending my most sincere and profound gratitude to President Mohamedou Buhari for nominating me to serve a second term as his minister. Working for President Mohamedou Buhari under his direction for three and a half years has been the high point of my professional career. 
If you will permit me uh, also, Mr. President, um, since the distinguished members have my CV uh, before them, um, I will not speak to, uh, to the CVs as such, but uh, I would rather, if you permit, Mr. President, give a very brief overview of, uh, of achievements within these last three and a half years. Distinguished members, on the economic diplomacy side, um, we came up with a, um, a mechanism called the Nigerian Economic Diplomacy Initiative that I introduced. And this, Your Excellencies, is a one-stop internet portal where Nigerian businesses, any Nigerian business, can upload their businesses and through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the comparative advantage the ministry has with a hundred embassies around the world, we can promote and match that Nigerian business with other Nigerian businesses around the world. And it will be a direct match to avoid all the bottlenecks that businesses ordinarily uh, suffer to access foreign markets. So this is a one-stop shop for, um, for all Nigerian businesses, and we've rolled this out. In addition, this mechanism um, also facilitates export promotion because foreign businesses will also be, uh, be able to go onto the site and, um, and have a sense of what Nigerian businesses are available and possible matches and partnerships. So, Your Excellency, this is uh, a one-way stop for matching uh, uh, businesses, Nigerian businesses and foreign businesses. On the diaspora matching, we have also set up an internet portal, and this is a brain gain exercise so that we can use all the Nigerians outside with skill set to upload on the, database, on the database and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs through the embassies will seek to match them with potential employers and others here in Nigeria. We know that there are a lot of Nigerians in the diaspora who would like to come back but do not know how to go about it. So this again is a one-stop shop marketplace as it were to, um, to, to, to incentivize and uh, attract Nigerian brains outside uh, uh, to come back. Your Excellencies uh, on citizens' diplomacy. This is a, has been a priority for, for the government, to protect and support Nigerians everywhere uh, in the world. And um, to address this, because we know of the many challenges that Nigerians are facing around the world, xenophobia, uh, their shops being shut, uh, human trafficking, Nigerians in prisons uh, in various countries, Nigerians who are looking for visas or passport renewal. We have seen on social media some of the reaction of Nigerians when they are confronted with obstacles in Nigerian embassies. And um, we have also now started to uh, create a 24-7, 24, 24 hours, seven days a week uh, help desk for all Nigerians anywhere in the world that they can contact. And, um, and the, 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 uh, the help desk will route the information to the necessary uh, officials to speed up the action. And it will also ensure that Nigerians providing services in our embassies know that there is some oversight and um, that what they do uh, is being closely watched. Your Excellency, on the issue of xenophobia, which is uh, a very topical issue uh, for us here in this country, uh, and in particular with regards to South Africa, uh, because of the situation there, I went personally to South Africa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, there, met with the Union, uh, or Nigerian Union of South Africa, went to view some of the places that had been burnt at that time during the last xenophobic attack, met with the High Commissioner there, met with the Consul General, and what I saw immediately, uh, Your Excellencies, 
uh, was that there was a trust deficit between the South African police and Nigerians. And the, the, the union, Nigerian Union of South Africa, also explained to me that this was a big challenge. So in the meeting that we had, the Minister of Foreign Affairs with the head of the police and uh, their Minister of Interior, I proposed to them that we have an early warning mechanism that we should set up and that this would essentially be at confidence building to have a regular meeting where the head of the police of South Africa and uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of South Africa and the major government uh, uh, office holders of South Africa will meet regularly with the Nigerian Union of South Africa as well as the High Commission and the, uh, the Controller General, the, um, our, um, uh, our yeah, Controller General. So the, the idea is to build confidence and to ensure that the Nigerians in South Africa can talk directly with the highest levels of government in South Africa, including the police, to build confidence and to start to address this issue. Um, Your Excellency, the MOU that we wanted to sign uh, has not yet been signed, but one thing I can say uh, is that the South African government itself uh, is not in any way complicit uh, in some of the attacks suffered by Nigerians uh, in South Africa and are ready to cooperate to address this. And whoever Mr. President nominates as a foreign minister, uh, I think an additional uh, uh, um, mechanism that can be put in place is a hotline between the Minister of uh, Nigeria of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of South Africa to be able to react uh, uh, immediately to any uh, 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 crises, attacks, or whatever in South Africa. And this is absolutely important speed of, uh, of action and, uh, and also for the South African police to know that there's oversight regarding how they engage with Nigerians in South Africa. Uh, on training, Your, um, Your Excellency, um, we, we also have a training challenge and we've been able to strengthen the uh, Foreign Service uh, Academy uh, based uh, in Lagos. But clearly that's an area that a lot more still needs to be uh, uh, done. And um, Your Excellency, possibly the most important thing is the, 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 the need to bring the Foreign Service, the Foreign Ministry, the whole architecture of our foreign policy up to the 21st century, to be fit for purpose for the 21st century. And um, with that in mind, uh, I, um, I started the process uh, of a desk-to-desk -desk gap analysis of the ministry, the agencies, and all our embassies uh, around the world, and uh, to look at the human resource uh, uh, needs and gaps, the, the work procedure, ICT, uh, the whole gamut. And the purpose of this, which will be done with a, uh, a consultancy firm and, uh, and other uh, a, a, a specialists, uh, is to now have a road map uh, for the modernization of our foreign, uh, foreign service, uh, uh, really, and our foreign policy uh, uh, architecture. Um, Your Excellency, uh, with regards to foreign relations, um, Mr. President uh, Mohammed Buhari has really uh, uh, shown himself to be one of the strongest brands that this country has on the foreign scene. And, um, and we see that he was uh, appointed as the anti-corruption champion for the African Union and also as the chairman of the authority of heads of state of ECOWAS, notwithstanding the fact that he was a bit reluctant because of his uh, uh, work, uh, workload to accept, but it was, they insisted that he should occupy those very key positions at this particular uh, moment uh, in time. And um, I was able, with uh, the, the ministry, to support him uh, in those positions in building an African consensus on fighting uh, corruption on the continent, and uh, in his capacity as chair of ECOWAS, uh, Authority of Heads of State, I also personally went as his envoy and under his direction and guidance to Guinea-Bissau, where we shepherded them through a very tricky situation, almost leading to a civil war, uh, through legislative elections, forming a government, and now preparing uh, for presidential elections. 
Uh, he sent me also as an envoy to Mali to broker peace between the uh, competing presidential uh, um, aspirants uh, uh, in that country. And now uh, there, has, uh, there is peace uh, in, uh, uh, in Mali at that level. To Ghana to deliver his message, or Mr. President, to the President in respect of Nigerian traders whose shops were being uh, closed uh, in Ghana. And again, the result was, uh, was positive. And we saw recently that those same traders, their representatives, came to thank personally Mr. President uh, for his uh, inv involvement. And also in Benin, uh, I went as a uh, special envoy uh, to also help to resolve the, the crisis uh, between the political parties before the legislative elections uh, in that uh, country. And also, Mr. Uh, uh, President, we've done a lot with regards to the recovery and repatriation of stolen funds. And uh, I have personally engaged very robustly uh, with uh, representatives of a number of countries uh, to help to secure that, uh, uh, that repatriation. And uh, finally, Mr. President, um, I was also able to sign an agreement with the United Nations uh, for, to employ young Nigerians. Uh, under a, a special program as junior professionals in the UN. And we're going to roll this out and have more of our young uh, 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 children working, uh, starting off their careers with the United uh, uh, Nations. And, um, and also, uh, we, I was able to engage with uh, a number of countries to ensure that Nigeria presented uh, a candidate unopposed as President of the United Nations General Assembly. And again, that was successful because we now have a Nigerian that will take over uh, our permanent representative in New York as the um, President of the General uh, Assembly. And finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, absolutely the last. I don't know if it's really an achievement, but three and a half years ago when I started this job, all my hair was black, but now it's all gray. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Before I call on my distinguished colleagues to make their contributions by asking questions. I think uh, I would like to, to start. About two and a half weeks ago, I had, uh, well, three weeks, I had an occasion to speak to the acting High Commissioner or Ambassador to South, of South Africa here in Nigeria. And I expressed our displeasure at the rate at which Nigerians are killed in South Africa, even by the police authorities. And I told him, we are not going to take it anymore, and I want to stand on that. This citizen diplomacy we are talking about, I think we are weak in it. The way we are killed in South Africa, maltreated in Ghana, is replicated almost everywhere. And pretty soon, until we are able to arrest this situation, Nigerians will face this kind of situation in almost every country. So what do you think you can do differently to bring this citizen diplomacy to a reality that Nigerians are respected? If a Nigerian commits or alleged to have committed a crime in South Africa, the police should take the necessary steps. In fact, I have written to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in Abuja asking the Ministry to give me all the names of Nigerians killed in South Africa. We are writing to the Parliament of South Africa. We are taking it to the next level, and I pray that you, who will be on the executive side, treat this matter as expeditiously and as seriously as possible. So what do you think you can do differently to ensure that Nigerians don't lose their lives? Even when they commit mistakes or, or, or crimes, alleged crimes, there are processes. Killing is not supposed to be the, the last resort. So what do you think you can do differently? So take note of this question, and then I will call Senator Mohamed San Musa, Senator Abdul Fattah Buhari, oh, Senate, Deputy Senate President first. You raise your hand. And then San Musa and Abdul Fattah Buhari. Thank you, Mr. President, and colleagues. Once again, I want to thank Mr. President for your nomination. It's a good nomination. Order, uh, order. You're order. a very, very decent man. And you've done well. 
as Minister of Foreign Affairs, just listening to the achievements that you've reeled out. While preparing to answer the question posed by the Senate President, I just want to clarify a little bit. When you said that uh, the South African government, government was not complicit in these killings, I just thought you should know that as a government, they have an obligation to protect the lives and the properties of Nigerians in oh. South Africa. So it is not enough, it's an excuse that these crimes purportedly were committed by people without the backing of government. That is no justification whatsoever. Uh, now, moving from there, you've also addressed the other area uh, I want to talk about. That is uh, uh, the treatment method, uh, method to Nigerian citizens by our embassies abroad, most especially uh, the U.S. Embassy the U.S. Embassy in Washington, D.C., and I believe, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, the, the, the consulate in uh, Ottawa, because I was, uh, some, not too long ago, I was, uh, uh, I watched a video, a, a video clip of uh, some Nigerian citizen who had traveled uh, almost four hours from where he resided in Canada to, I believe, Ottawa to have uh, just an Nigerian passport renewed. Uh, and of course, just like uh, what transpired or continued to transpire in Washington, D.C., uh, it was turned back. Getting a passport, a Nigerian passport in Washington, D.C., or even uh, a Nigerian visa to come to Nigeria is a nightmare. And I want you to really, really look into that uh, uh, area. It's something I believe you can do. Uh, then moving from there, also in, in that Washington, D.C. embassy, there are also other issues I need you to look into. The welfare of the Nigerian people who are working in that embassy. I know uh, with the Washington Embassy, uh, it's one of the premier uh, 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 embassies we have uh, across the world. Premier in the sense that a lot of attention in terms of finance and so on. Funding is given more to that embassy than I believe uh, uh, to other embassies. Yet, those who are doing the job, some, I'm aware, two years have never been paid salaries in Washington, D.C. So I just thought uh, it's a concern. I should bring this to your attention. So once again, uh, I have confidence that uh, 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 once cleared by this Senate, and by the way, you have my support, uh, once cleared uh, 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 by this Senate, uh, you will continue to add value to the cabinet uh, of President Mohamed Buhari. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair, my distinguished colleagues. Uh, my name is Mohamed Sani Musa, representing Niger East Senatorial District. Uh, my question to a Former Honorable Minister, who is a complete gentleman. First and foremost, I will say congratulations. And uh, I will want to add here, and we have seen how the Nigerian Embassy is battling with this issue. We have seen most unfortunate situations where Nigerians died, and it was an embassy staff that have to take responsibility of the cost to bring to Nigeria. There wasn't any government intervention in that. And I felt as a Nigerian, it's sad to see our embassies. If you go to Mali, you see the embassy of Niger Republic better than our own. I think there is need for something to be done. The question here is that while you administer the office, <coughs> what steps were taken? to tackle the dicky that we've had over the years. And if for any reason you happen to get back to that office, what are you going to do to alleviate the Nigerian embassies that are almost going down? Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as the chair, my respected colleagues, Uwari Abdul Fatai, or your not. Congratulations, Mr. Nominee, but I have two questions for you. One, if you apply for a Chinese visa at the Chinese embassy, when they screen your paper and they are not going to give you a visa, they give you back your paper without asking for a dime. If they are going to give you a visa, they take in your paper and you pay. American embassy, British embassy, and all other embassies will take your money. They are stingy with their visa and greedy with our money. They will take your money, issue only 10% each day, and tell you they are not refunding the money for administrative purpose. 500000 for administrative purpose? That's exploitation of Nigeria. What are you going to do for other embassy to tow the line of Chinese embassy? Second question. In the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, Joe Garba, Ike Wachuku, Professor Gambari, Professor Akiemi, where we have vibrant foreign policy that's that was period. In the last four years, what is our foreign policy? If we don't have, what do you intend to recreate that those years for us to have a vibrant foreign policy? If we have a vibrant policy, a foreign policy, all these threats from all these small, small countries won't happen. Thank you. Chief we Deputy Leader Ambarao Jubrin, in that order. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Ojo Zorkalo. I represent Abia North. My question, partly what he asked, I will reframe it. I don't know what our policy, foreign policy is with today, with the U.S. Because the way Nigerians are treated, even at the entry point, they will repatriate Nigerians with competent visa to go back to their country without mining the cost of transportation, without mining things that goes with it, and that they had a valid visa, not fake. And to support what my colleague said, Buhari, you, you, many people, I don't need the American visa anyway, many people go to the embassy, and the way they are treated, like if they are nothing. And these are, these are Wales, meaning Nigerians, who will contribute both here and in the U.S. I want you, if you, if President will uh, get you back to foreign ministry, I want you to look into this. Write the question. All the businesses in the West Coast where Nigerian people have interest, which I will discuss privately with you, the foreign countries, no, it's true. I don't want to cause trouble here. The co foreign countries are killing Nigerian businesses in insurance, banking, oil. I mean, any Nigerian company you ask, from Dagote to Sahara, the same problem is the same. So I am telling you that what will you do to solve it, especially in our most neighboring countries? The way for the last eight months, the hostage in uh, the attitude of these people to our faith, being Nigeria, if you ask the owners of banks here, they will tell you. The, 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 the attitude is so much. My question is that how are you going to manage this problem if President Buhari reappoints you into the foreign ministry? Deputy Leader, and then Baro Jubrin. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting at the chair. My name is Robert Borofis, representing Ondo North Senatorial District. Uh, Mr. Nominee, I join my colleagues in congratulating you for being nominated again. Mr. Nominee, from years back, we started the Technical Aid Corps program, which is meant to help less, uh, well, less privileged 
developing countries. It also provides employment for our youth. And this program has been running for some time now. To me, it looks like the counterpart of the American Peace Corps program. From your own assessment, do you think that this program should continue? Do you think it has justified our investment in this program? Should we continue or should we discontinue? Thank you. You can respond to the questions, please. <clears throat> Sorry, Balo. Balo Jibri. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as the chairman of the Committee of the Whole, for giving me the chance to speak. Um, Mr. Nomini, let me say I'm, I commend you for your stewardship during your stint as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of this country except where we have problem as uh, explained by the Senate President. Now, in addition to the point that was raised by Mr. President, we also have a lot of Nigerians that are held up in Libya. You did very well by repatriating so many of them some while, you know, some months ago. But there are still several Nigerians. Uh, among them, several were killed recently. Are you, what are you doing to bring back the rest to safety? Uh, or what will you do if you are confirmed as minister? Sorry. I'm assuming that uh, he has already been confirmed as minister because he's a nice man. So I'm saying, assuming you get back your portfolio as a Minister of Foreign Affairs. Are you going to uh, make sure that uh, the rest that are there will be repatriated back to the country, which uh, is really, really necessary? Thank you. You can respond to the questions, please. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, distinguished uh, uh, members uh, for those very pertinent, very incisive uh, questions. Um, if you permit, uh, Your Excellency, uh, uh, Mr. President, I will uh, uh, start with, um, with your question about citizens' diplomacy and uh, what uh, I can do uh, if uh, reappointed uh, specifically uh, to tackle the, the matter. Um, Your Excellency, for me, what I believe is the issue is really one of communication and quick communication and two, the direct oversight of law enforcement agencies uh, in South Africa. Um, this seems to be the, the real problem for Nigerians in, in South Africa. We, we must not forget your Excellencies, that the, the level of crime generally in South Africa is extremely high. And, um, and, and so one is dealing in an environment of very high crime rates. Um, specifically, Mr. President, um, what I would do is what I mentioned. I think that there has to be a hotline um, between myself if I were appointed as Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of South Africa, that once we, as I said, we hope to now have in place uh, uh, this help desk for Nigerians, once there is any sign of uh, problems for any Nigerians, to get it immediately across to the highest level of government in South Africa to... Um, to engage with our High Commission there to, uh, uh, to start addressing very, very quickly uh, the, uh, the issue. And secondly, the other thing I would do is, as I said, it is absolutely important that the higher echelon of the security agencies, the police uh, in South Africa, engage directly with the Nigerian Union of South Africa. And this is a framework I tried to create. Uh, 
uh, with an early warning system. The reason why I did that was because the Nigerian members of the Nigerian Union of South Africa told me that the problem they were having is that they themselves know the criminal elements among the Nigerian community and that they would like a situation where they can go to the law enforcement agencies to alert them uh, of, of those uh, 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 criminals so that action can be taken quickly. But because of the trust deficit between the Nigerians and the South African police, they say that very often, um, you know, they're not able to work with the South African police. So I think that uh, it's important to get the, 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 the senior officers in the South African police directly engaged uh, on this matter and um, to sign this MOU. And that's where I think we also need higher level engagement with, uh, uh, with them. And of course, the president of South Africa, President Ramaphosa, um, uh, they've requested formally for a bilateral meeting. We have set up uh, under the former president, President Zuma, uh, with President Buhari, a binational meeting where they will be meeting regularly at the level of president to address bilateral issues. And so it's important that we organize very quickly the, uh, the next bilateral meeting at the presidential level so this matter can also be addressed so that it really becomes an issue uh, addressed with political will and by the highest uh, levels of government of South Africa. Um, Your Excellency, you also talked about the, the video that's been circulating uh, regarding uh, the treatment of a Nigerian uh, in a mission in, in Canada. Uh, two things regarding that, Your Excellency. Uh, I also saw the video, and the moment I saw it, I called the, embassy, the High Commission in Canada. And, um, and I was informed that it quickly became apparent that this was a video that had been circulating for over three years and that it was not current. And uh, we have an excellent High Commissioner there presently, and uh, such has been the very positive and efficient way they've been addressing and dealing with uh, providing services uh, for Nigerians, that uh, almost all the Nigerians now are writing to us, praising uh, uh, the Nigerian High Commission uh, in Canada. Um, you also mentioned um, your Excellency, the issue of uh, Nigerian staff uh, in the embassy in Washington and payment of salaries and so forth. Your Excellency, the issue of payment of salaries has really been the bane, the, the real problem and challenge that we have uh, in, with regards to our foreign uh, uh, service uh, generally. Uh, I met on numerous occasions with the ministers of finance uh, to try to, and the CBN governor and so forth, to ensure that um, the allocations to our embassies are paid on time. But it's almost become the rule and the practice that they come in so late and not always in full. We've had to come uh, to this uh, august body uh, on two or three occasions to ask for special interventions because of the late payment and other things uh, to our, our, our missions. And it's something that we are, we are really dealing with, uh, uh, Your Excellency. Another thing is that the amount appropriated to our embassies are usually just a fraction of, um, of what we have identified as the needs of these embassies. And then they're not paid on time. So it's really a, a major challenge that, um, that we are addressing. Mr. President uh, gave the directive that um, we should have a multi uh, meeting Governor of Central Bank, Minister of, uh, uh, the Ministry of Finance, and all the others, to really address once and for all this whole issue. And one of the solutions could conceivably be that we just have to reduce even further our number of missions. The amounts that we pay for our foreign uh, 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 service uh, does not compare with, uh, with other countries. And we really have to uh, of course, we have other competing interests as a country, um, but it, it is a real challenge that we are, we are still uh, uh, battling with, uh, uh, Your Excellency. Um, the um, Deputy uh, uh, Senate uh, uh, President um, also, I think, raised the, uh, also raised the, the issue that uh, the, the, it wasn't just a question of... Um, 
of the South African government not being uh, complicit, uh, but how can we really um, uh, ensure that this business of you know, uh, attacking and killing Nigerians does not, uh, does not continue? And I think I've tried to answer it uh, with the first question. It's going to require really high-level uh, government uh, engagement, the bilateral meeting uh, with the president, and also a hotline and, uh, and, in, and getting the South African police uh, to uh, join up with our early warning system. So they're meeting regularly with Nigerians because the Nigerians Union of South Africa wants to be part of helping the South African police to address the, 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 the criminal elements that do exist. And nobody doubts that they do exist uh, in South Africa. And I think building up this trust is, uh, is absolutely uh, key. And that's what I would certainly uh, uh, push, uh, push towards. Uh, Your Excellency Senator Musa um, um, asked a, a, a very pertinent uh, a question about um, non-appreciation of a lot that Nigeria does for so many countries. Um, and this is something that uh, we have uh, noticed on a recurring basis. And um, how I would address it, and uh, if I were now uh, giving the opportunity going forward, as, which I already raised uh, in the past, is that every multilateral meeting we attend, AU meeting, ECOWAS meeting, and so forth, there should be a part of a documentation of all the assistance we're providing to African countries. And this should be uh, distributed uh, always uh, for any of those meetings so that it's not something that we and the beneficiaries know about, but that everybody uh, can see. <clears throat> and, uh, and I think this will you know, begin to make it um, more open and, uh, and clearer precisely the, um, the, the, well, the sacrifice that we are also making for other countries uh, on our continent. Um, on the issue of um, human trafficking and, again, the uh, financial problems uh, faced by our uh, embassies, and you mentioned, you know, of course, in particular, uh, Mali, um, the, the, the human trafficking issue is also something that I believe that this help desk will, will, will start to solve because I think at the moment very often there are too many silos uh, working in, in silos. Of course, we have NAPTIP and then you have the embassies there and, uh, uh, and others working around the same uh, uh, issues are not always uh, cooperating and uh, working together. And, uh, and I believe that uh, with a centralized help desk where information will be coming in and the ministry will be in a position of making sure that the requirement for action is forwarded to the, uh, to the right people, we will begin to address those issues uh, in a timely manner and, uh, and also with, uh, uh, with a coherent uh, approach. Um, and, of course, the financial problems uh, that are faced uh, in our embassies uh, is, again, uh, a, a major one. And a lot of it is just the appropriation uh, is never commensurate to what. This is Channels Television. And you've been watching our live coverage of the screening of ministerial nominees by the Ninth Senate at the National Assembly Abuja. We'll now return to our regular programs. And up next is Politics Today. Stay with us.